Hi, and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Today I wanted to do a quick rant on Spring Framework, especially Spring Boot. Um, we are using it a lot in the company where I'm working. There's a lot of opinions uh, both uh, for it and both against it. So I thought uh, I'd give uh, some, some of my opinions on, on, uh, on Spring Boot. I'm an old time user of Spring Framework. I, I got started uh, when it was in the first iterations, way, way back before Spring Boot. Back then, this is the old timer stuff now. But back then there was a lot more XML going on. So it, it was a bit more configuration heavy framework. And uh, modern Spring Boot is uh, very different to that framework. It's an extremely popular Java framework. And uh, for example, in the company where I'm working, um, it's very typical choice when, when we implement a new project for a customer to pick up Java, uh, just decide which version, get Spring, and then figure out what uh, front-end framework you are going to use. Some people have been trying to use something else than Spring because they have been unhappy with it. There's a lot of popular frameworks like um, Micronaut, uh, Ver Vertex, uh, for example. Um, however, they have not been uh, very mainstream, so Spring is still the popular choice. Uh, for me, it's a little bit of love and hate relationship for reasons which I will now uh, discuss. But first, um, one, one reason uh, why people say that you shouldn't be using Spring is that they are claiming that there's too much magic going on. So magic happening. And uh, here I would leave you with Arthur C. Clarke quote somewhere here. Okay, so uh, for me, spring is not magic. Uh, magic is magic if you don't uh, know the details. If you understand uh, what's going on, there's no magic. It's just machinery. So uh, I'm, I'm uh, pretty old hand with spring. There's a lot of modules. I still have no experience with it, but uh, the core spring and many of the modules I know uh, for, uh, I've known for a very long, long time and keeping up to date with them. So for me, there's no magic. I pretty much understand what goes on uh, because I know uh, the underlying machinery as well. It helps a little bit that I jumped in the boat when we had the application context uh, set up by XML files. It was a little bit different than modern annotation based mechanism. Okay. So I'll just kind of uh, di disprove that idea that there's too much magic. However, if we, if we uh, reformat that statement, if we say that Spring is um, a rather complicated framework, well, there might be a seed of truth. If we say that the uh, Spring framework uh, is complicated and for a newcomer who jumps in and uh, goes through the first tutorial, there might be a lot of mechanisms that are not obvious. Well, th then that's true as well. So uh, those are definitely uh, some of the kind of downsides of using Spring Framework or Spring Boot in general. There's a lot of things, and unless you have kind of read the documentation, did the tutorials, learned it, uh, keeping your skills up to date, there will be probably things that you are not aware of and they might be affecting. So you get, you get a lot of mechanisms when you just import that one dependency in your application. And uh, every time you get a new module, you get a lot, especially Spring Security is one of those high, high magic uh, modules. Okay. So I don't consider that, uh, that magic so much a downside. Annotations are not magic. If you understand the mechanisms, understand what they do. However, I do have some kind of downsides that I consider with Spring. One would be that it's, uh, it's, it's been a little bit bloated, like, like Java itself. New features have been added on top of old ones. So even though Spring is modular, still, when you, when you do that one dependency, you get a lot of things. And sometimes that means that when you are combining other libraries, you, for example, need to be careful with the dependencies and check where you are getting them. Are they version compatible, etc. And And, uh, and uh, the bloating also means that it eats up a lot of memory just when it starts up. So you load the Java up until Java 8, all, already starting Java uh, was quite a lot. So it, it uses some, somewhat a lot of memory. I'm comparing to some more lightweight technologies where you can whip out the REST web, web service 
with very little little code, very little memory usage. You just get uh, you just get what you need. So uh, starting up Java and then on top of that all the Spring libraries and then on top of that lies your own application. So that's uh, kind of a lot. Again, <laughs> kind of grandfather musings, but way back uh, we used to do those war packages and and uh, put them in an application server and they were actually lightweight because the application server already had everything and it was always set up rather the same way so you had the same combination of libraries there so it it made your applications in that sense a little bit more lightweight modern spring packages your web server and all the kind of enterprise edition dependencies you want to use and then your code uh, together and it's a little bit heavier package. Typically we have been used to that so typically that has not been a problem. Memory is cheap so we have been just throwing memory at the problem and, and it resolves it. But um, I think there is room for improvement. I've been really excited about uh, capability to customize your virtual machine these days. Java modularity, Spring is catching up to that as well. So uh, Java is becoming more like a lightweight version where you can choose what you really need. And I think Spring is, Spring is heading a bit same way. So perhaps um, a future Spring will be uh, meaner and leaner and will give a better kind of um, competition for those meaner and leaner frameworks like Micronaut and, and uh, yeah, I, I already mentioned Micronaut and Vertex have been a few that are on my radar. Yeah. So uh, that, that's kind of a downside, downside of Spring is uh, a size, complexity, a little bit of bloat uh, that can be argued. Um, also for a newcomer, a lot of magic happening. What would be the upsides? Why Spring is still being chosen as the base for our backend with Java uh, a lot? What, what's the reason? Well, one reason that I like is that it's rather easy. It's industry standard, so it's well known. It's easy to find people with experience in there. If you are new to Spring and want to get started, you observe a few tutorials, follow them, uh, play, play with them a little bit. You can get started in 15 minutes. I know because I released a video where I whip out first rest, RESTful web service with some dev explanations along the way, and it takes about 15 minutes. Uh, it doesn't mean you learn everything in 15 minutes, but you get your first starting place there. So it's rather easy. It's rather kind of common. It's a, never a, a bad skill kind of to learn a little bit of that as well. And then another thing that I like is that once your application grows, <coughs> sorry about that, you actually start needing more and more libraries. So you need some uh, database uh, libraries. You might need some transaction capabilities there as well. Probably do. Uh, you might want some security features. You might want to integrate this with Docker containers or some cloud stuff um, or want to do microservices. So uh, there is uh, plenty of room to grow within Spring. You can choose those modules that bring you happiness and create your, your uh, application there. I once did some prototypes with some other more lightweight libraries. They only resolve one thing. And then um, if you want to expand, when, when you want to expand and do something in real world, you actually want to, uh, then, then you need to bring more libraries that have not necessarily been tested so well or integrated so well. So you will have more or less problems. The pro with that approach is that you have better understanding of the machinery that you are running and you can choose exactly what you need and want. So uh, there's something to be said about that. For example, I did something with the Micronaut and Dale spread and I got a very lightweight package with just the essentials. But every time I want something new, um, I, I need to bring in more libraries. With Spring, there's pretty good default. So, so you just uh, kind of include one more module and you get a lot of good stuff going on. For example, I think databases are one area where Spring really shines. It offer, offers you many ways to kind of uh, approach the database layers and uh, do that rather easy as well. Uh, you can choose extremely easy ways with using object relational mapping of some, some kind. And, uh, 
and uh, then uh, ap apply some database migrations or you can you can go a little bit harder way and use some spring jdbc and, and uh, kind of craft your sql statements manually uh, and there's a lot of things that fall in between those extremes okay so my my kind of uh, conclusion with spring is that um, as i said a little bit of love hate relationship i have had my struggles sometimes with it but as i said i typically don't uh, fault that to be that it's magic so so it's a useless framework my thinking is that if i if i find those struggles i like to resolve them uh, it's typically some some la lack in my knowledge it's something i don't know about the framework so I, I i learn about it and then i make sure that everybody in the team at least understands this pitfall i perhaps make a video of of that these days if i find something interesting that smells like a pitfall um, I love it as a base that lets me easily to grow. So I can whip out very simple prototypes very rapidly with it. It's almost like a low code environment with Java. And it supports now latest versions of Java. So I can, I can use Java 16 with it, which makes me happy. So all these are very good things. As I said, I understand and appreciate the downsides and I'm constantly looking for uh, alternative good options for it as well. But meanwhile, I, I have absolutely no problem using it as well. My only piece of advice would be that if you are using it, it's better to uh, go a bit deeper with it and in, instead of just knowing the surface, because if you only know the surface, if you only do the 15 minute tutorial, uh, then it means that you will be experiencing those magic moments and they are not happy days for a developer. When something happens that shouldn't happen, it feels awkward. What can you do then? Well, I would say start your days by uh, spending 15 minutes with Spring documentation, first of all. Do more than just one tutorial. So do like 10 tutorials. Do one every weekend. And uh, then after that, find a nice community where you can ask stupid questions. It might be your team. It might be wider community. It can be my videos as well. Uh, stupid questions are extremely welcome under my videos comment sections because they will help me grow they will help you grow every time somebody is brave enough to do a stupid question i i, I will never laugh about them well i might laugh a, a kind of a happy laugh uh, uh, if somebody is brave enough for the bravery but it's always a moment of growth so if, if you are stupid enough uh, to not ask any questions it means you will never grow and the pains will stay with you. Every time you find that conflict between what you know and what you need, and you figure it out and you, you find somebody who can, you can pose a question, it means you are aiming to grow and then <clears throat> uh, you, you're curious, you are extending what you know, and then once you figure that one out, you have grown a little bit. So I've seen people treat these things differently. Some people see a problem and they flee and hide and get, get critical. Uh, everything is uh, bad if, if you start to think about it. Every possible tool has its uh, pitfall. So if you just say that this is a bad tool and flee from that, you will never grow. But if you say that, uh, okay, this is the tool I'm using and uh, I don't know everything about it, but I would like to expand my knowledge because I'm still using that tool at the end of the day. I like to make my future days a little bit better learn a new thing every week one percent uh, theory i think that brings you to a lot happier place i think that's how i'm approaching things i would highly recommend that so i think that was my rant for this uh, kind of video it's already almost 15 minutes and it's my absolute maximum for my new videos so thank you for watching this you know what to do if you liked it uh, see you in the next video bye bye